This flight controller has what I believe to be a short on one of the UARTs. Now this actually happened whilst it is in a quad and since then I took it out and I've been using it as a bench test controller. One of the UARTs actually doesn't work and I've shown on the channel a number of times that the SOC actually gets really hot in a specific position. What we're going to do today is try swapping the SOC on this flight controller to finally try and answer if the issue is the SOC itself or if there's a problem on the PCB. Now the idea of this video is really just to give you an idea of the kind of repairs that you can do on flight controllers. It isn't designed to be a how-to guide. Anything I show you in this video isn't going to be perfect. The way I do things isn't necessarily the same way other people do. However, hopefully it may just show that not everything has to go in the bin. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at what the actual issue is first of all. Now this is an old Beta FPV Whoop board and you will see that there's an XT60 soldered on and the reason for that is this is actually my bench testing board and whilst it does actually work it has one very strange fault and that is that the SOC overheats. Now to show you this what we're going to do is take a look at it under the thermal camera we'll take a look at what actually goes on I have showed this board a few times on the channel with the thermal imaging and then we're going to get it under the microscope and we're going to try replacing that SOC to try and understand if the issue is the actual SOC itself or is the issue the board. Okay now to show you this under my thermal camera I'm using my P2 Pro for this I've actually done a review of that on the channel before but rather than using the smartphone app I'm using a new app called IR Cam. Now this is a PC app specifically designed for use with some of the infrared cameras and it is a hugely powerful piece of software it is a paid app it is not free it's about $90 but it has a massive amount of functionality and I will actually be making a video on this app in the near future and today whilst I'll show you some of its features if you're interested in seeing that video please do make sure you are subscribed. Now what we're going to do is plug in this board to show you what the actual issue is and if we look at the SOC the you can see this spot has appeared in the corner there and that is an issue in the chip it has a short and what I don't know at this point is if it's the chip itself that's got the short or the board but what happens is it gets really really hot very very quickly and then begins to overheat and it causes issues now whilst I can use it it does cause problems and what we're going to do today is replace that SOC and see if the fault follows this SOC, if is it the chip itself or is it the PCB or at least something on the PCB causing it to get that hot. Now whilst I'm not going to go over all of the features of this software you can do some really cool stuff with this. So for instance you can see I've set it to track the maximum temperature, I've set up regions of interest so I can place them there and place them there allowing us to actually look at temperatures within that region. So for instance sense I could put it over that IC there and there's also this really cool feature which is setting up a second live view window allowing you to put a separate color palette on it so for instance we can set that to iron or we could set it to cool hot if we wanted to which again so if we just go to there cool and we can expand that box allowing us to look at different ways of looking at what we're seeing we got dark hot which again allows us here to see that spot over there completely different to the way we were doing it before and again it just offers some really nice functionality that you don't get in the standard app and as I've said I will cover this properly in the video I make in the future. So that's the SOC there and what we're going to need to do is get that off the board. Now my donor for this today is an old Omnibus F4. It's another STM32 F405. It's the R6T6 or RGT6 and that is the RGT6 as well. This is just a newer chip. So what we're going to do is basically get this one off this board, get that one off that board and then swap them over. Now the best way to get this off this board is going to be using hot air so what I'm going to do is put a bunch of my horrible flux that everyone always hates. I tend to use this rosin flux because it is very thick, it's not the best stuff in the world however 
it does allow me to hold things in place whilst trying to get them off. So what we're going to do is get it covered. We're going to put plenty on there and we're going to try and get the chip off without damaging or moving any of the other components on the board. Okay, so the chip's removed. So what we now need to do is clean this all up. I'm just using some IPA. We're then gonna get my soldering iron and then just go over all of the pads with some leaded solder, hopefully just to tidy everything up, try and get as much of that lead free solder off as I can. And again, that should just then make mounting the new chip a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is come back once this is done. Okay, so all of those pads have now been clean with the leaded solder. And if we just give everything a good clean over, it's then ready to take our new chip. So the next thing we're going to do is put that board to one side and we're going to need to get this off this board. Now, again, the, the one easy way to do this is with hot air and try and get it off that way but what i might actually do on this and it's a trick that i've seen especially if there's plenty of room around the chip like there is on this one is we're going to cover it in flux and then i'm going to just go over it with the iron first to loosen up all of the pins okay so what we're going to do is go over all of these just to try and put some leaded solder on there because the lead free stuff is always a pig to undo and what this will allow me to do is just hopefully when I get the hot air on it get it off a little bit easier than I would normally yeah, spin that around to that side we're gonna go down there again I'm not worried about bridging any of these I can sort that out afterwards Cool. Okay, so what we'll do now is go for the hot air again. We'll put more flux on. The more the better. There we go. And then we'll get him off. Here we go. Now that did take a bit more than I did anticipate. We'll just wait for that to cool. But we have got him off. All looking good. We just hop him over. We can just have a quick look at the pads. Everything looks okay. We're not going to do too much on this. Check they all look fine. It's all okay. Everything's nice and flat. Yeah, all looks good. 
Now we'll just give the chip a bit of a clean underneath because there is uh, plenty of flux under there. It's not that important to make sure the bottom of the chip is clean. But it does just help a little bit to clean it up before we put it back on. And at least then we know we got the orientation right. Okay, so what we need to do is get this refitted. Now, the way I'm going to do this is by hand. I'm not going to hotty this back on. So what I'm going to do is flux the pads a minute. Make sure that there's plenty on there. We don't quite need all of that underneath the middle. So I can just mop that up a little bit. But the pads themselves are now fluxed. So we're going to do this by hand. So we're going to place him on. And what we're then going to do is we're going to try and line it up. And this isn't as easy as it looks or sounds. We'll then tack down one pad. Now, the reason it won't be as easy as it you would think, because I have tinned the pads, which means they are sitting up a little bit from where they would usually be. But what we want to do is just get it roughly right. That's looking good. I'm happy with that. And what I'm going to do is tack it down by one pad. First of all, I'm just going to very carefully do that one. There we go. We're then going to just check the alignment. Ooh, up a touch. There looks really good. And I'm going to tap. I'm going to tack him down. I'm going to tack that one down there. We're going to tack that one up there. That one there. Or those two, I should say. Cool. And then, now the alignment looks good, what I'm going to do one at a time is just go over all of these with the iron. So we're not going to add any solder. There's solder on the pad. So what I'm going to do is just put some pressure on the chip. And then one at a time, go over all of the legs. So I've gone around all of the legs. So the next thing I'm going to do is clean it all up and then we'll do a check on those legs one at a time with regards to making sure that they are tacked down. So I'm just going to clean it up with IPA. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is just check all of these pins one at a time to make sure that they are tacked down. Now, I have noticed something along the bottom, which I'll come back to in a minute, but we'll go up this side first of all to make sure all of these are correct. Yeah, they all look good. If we go along this top, that's all looking good. We're going to go along this side down here. So again, we want to just make sure all of these are tacked down as expected. There's no bridging, no shorts. No, that's good. Now, if we look along the bottom, you can see that they're all loose. And that's because I missed that area. I thought I'd actually gone round there, but I went round in circles a couple of times as I went round and missed it. So we need to flux it up. 
and then do that bottom area again. Now there is a little bit of a bridge across those two pads there so what we're going to do is get in there with a bit of copper and try and get that off. I might need to change the tip on my iron for this because I don't know if this one's going to get enough heat into it. But we'll give it a go. There we go. Yeah, it did. We just had a little bit of a bridge on that one which we've now resolved. Okay, so if we now check the pins down here, we're just going to check them again with the tweezers, just making sure that they're all solid. Looking good. We're just going to go in now a lot closer and just check for any bridging that I couldn't see from further above. Let's go down there. Ignore the brush bristles. They're always a bit of a pain in the bum. All looking good so far. A couple of the pines, not quite straight on the pads, but I'm not worried about that. That's fine. What we're looking for is any bridging. Now, all looks good. Cool. So the new SOC is fitted. So the next thing we need to do is test this. And we're also going to need to reflash it because it's also going to have the wrong firmware on it. So the first thing we're going to do is plug it into USB and see if it goes on fire. It's always the best first move. Now we've got it plugged into a power bank, so it's going to have a bit of power if it needs it. Looking good. The LEDs flashing, which is the status one. I think what we'll do before we do anything else is actually get it back under the thermal camera and see what happens when I power up and see if we get that red spot. Okay, so we're back under the thermal and we're going to plug it in. Oh, wow, look at that. Absolutely better. You don't have that short coming up. Like we saw earlier, we can see the voltage regulators getting hot, but there isn't that very hot dot appearing there in the corner. So let's, uh, let's get beta flight flashed and let's see if it performs as expected. Okay, so the flash is complete. What we're going to do now is connect and see if it behaves as expected. We'll apply the custom defaults. And there we go. We are all up and running. Gyro is working as expected. Flipping it around, you can see it's moving around nicely. And if we then get it back under the thermal, just to take a look, that SOC is absolutely fine. No issues at all working as expected with no hot spot showing in the corner. Now just to do something a little bit interesting, I'm going to put that SOC back on the other board so that means we've done a complete swap on both and then we'll have a look at that one under the thermal as well. Okay, so I've put that other SOC back on this flight controller now and we'll test it under the thermal camera again to have a look what it does. So if we drop to the desktop, we've got the thermal there. I can put it under and then what we'll do is plug it into USB, find the port, and then we'll see if we get that same behavior. Oh, straight away, look at that. That is so 
quick to see. It really, really is. Now, that literally can only be a short in the SOC. That, that's all it can be. There is nothing else that could be causing this on this SOC. It literally must be a short in the IC there. What's interesting is there, look, you can see something there shining through. I don't know what that is. Is that an arc in? I do not know what that is. Is that on the other side of the board? No, it isn't. Wow, look at that. I have i don't know if that's an arc in. I can't really zoom in much closer with this camera to take a look at it. Let's just get that under the microscope a second and take a look at what is going on. Okay, just having had a quick look at that, it's IPA still under the main SOC flashing off. So what you're seeing is the IPA bubbling off with the heat of the SOC, and that's what's causing that flashing down by there, and you're seeing it up there as well. But what's clear is this SOC absolutely has a short. Now, whilst we've been able to fix the SOC issue, and I can confirm that the UART is fixed, there is one other problem on this board, and that is it doesn't behave on external power. Now, that is something that's new. That actually started a couple of weeks ago. I think it's something I probably did on the bench. It's getting hot, to say the least, when we plug it in, so there's a short somewhere. So let's go and have a quick look at this and see if there's anything we can do about that. Now, just to show you what happens under the thermal camera when you power it up, this IC in the top left corner here starts to get very, very hot, but specifically on one pin. You can see that it really, really is getting hot compared to the rest of the board. Now, after removing the components, it became clear that it is actually a short within the layers of the PCB. And in fact, it's getting so hot, it actually wets the solder on the pads above it. And you can see there that they wet. And then when I turn it off, they go solid again. Now, these type of faults are actually quite hard to fix. There are things we can do, and we will take a look at that in a minute. However, at this point, it's clear that it's a short within the layers of the PCB. I'm not seeing any damage. I'm not seeing seeing anything that may have directly contributed to this so it's probably something that's happened by accident when it's been laying on the bench and it's touched something around it. Now just to show you what happens if you try and leave it to burn itself out this is something that can actually be a solution to things like this. You can see there it is getting crazy crazy hot in that corner area but no matter how much power I put into it it kept lighting up so then it's time to take further action. Now, I spent some time digging it out with some tweezers. However, in the end, I got a sanding disc out on the Dremel and removed that whole area, and this has now removed the short. What's interesting here is you can see all of the different layers inside the PCB, and it just goes to show how much is going on beneath the surface that you may not always know is there. Now, just to test this, if we take a look, I've got it on a short saver just to stop anything going on fire. If we power it on, you can see that we're on a green light, so there's no short. However, we're not getting the normal LED. Now, I have checked this a few minutes ago, and what actually happens is we do get this red LED down here come on in a minute, but we don't get the flight controller boot up as expected, and it's not doing anything at all. It does actually work on USB, but from the external power, it's dead, and I think it's time for us to put a nail in the coffin of this one. We've tried as much as we can. We did manage to fix the SOC issue, but if we can't power it externally, it's probably not worth messing around with anymore. So in the end, it is what it is. We did see some success, but we couldn't get past the power issue, so it's now time for the bin. Now, I'm really interested in knowing what you think about this video. Please do share your thoughts and comments below, and I will try and answer any questions you may have. If you have found this video interesting and you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do check out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel, as well as all the people who do donate via buy me a coffee as well. And if you'd like to support us in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.